right, we're back at it again. Um, so, what's going on? Before we actually just, I was about to just dive into our topic, but let me at least I know, say hi. I noticed, yeah, I noticed my emojis are all washed out. I'm, I'm. Uh, Is it raining out? I'm, I'm watching a thunderstorm roll in across. The oh house. yeah, Madsen was just telling me about that on our previous call. Yeah, and he's about, I don't know, I don't know miles wise, but he's maybe like a twenty minute drive west mm-hmm. of me. Um, and the storms come in west to east, so like it hits him, then he's like, oh, it's storming. I'm like, all right, 20, 20 minutes from now, 15 minutes from now, I'll roll in here. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. He messaged me. He's like, oh, I love the thunder. I'm like, oh, it'll be here soon. I'm like, yep, here it is. Nice. <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's it's, nice. it, it, it's it's nice here right now, and uh, it's supposed to be nice all weekend. So I told my wife that my plans this weekend would be outside all weekend. Mm. One, just kind of prepping the lawn, prepping the outside area so the kids can play. Now that you the weather's with, you going, you going with the jorts? Oh, I'm going total jorts <laughs> with the tube socks and the New Balance sneakers. I'll send you a picture. <laughs> One of these days, I actually might go buy a pair of jorts because I actually don't have them. I, You're going to have to. I mean. I, I, I'm going to have to go get a pair of jorts and a pair of New Balance and have Suzanne take a picture of me mowing the lawn and that just to send it to you. Yeah, that'd make my day. <laughs> because like I know that's your vision of me when I'm out yeah, there mowing. It totally lawn. is. <laughs> it totally <laughs> is. T- t- total, you know, suburban dad with yeah. the New Balance sneakers. Yeah, totally. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm I'm looking forward to getting outside and getting all the outdoor stuff up so our son can just go and run and I wanna start working on the lawn and I've got some wood to burn, so I'm gonna start a fire. Nice. Got your, your stove, your outdoor uh, stove. Yeah, so we got a, a chimney and a fire pit. Nice. That will be fun. Yeah. So that's the plan. Is Saturday is yard work, and I, and this is the time of year I love it because it just I'm itching to get outside and spend time outside. By the time the end of August rolls around, I hate it, and I'm like, I'm done with this. Let's pack it all up. It's <laughs> I'm done. Yeah, I, I'm looking forward to it, too, because we, we've had this extended cold and winter, and it's like finally spring, and everything's blooming, mm-hmm. uh, so it's nice. Although, uh, I think my neighbors think I'm a bit odd. I, I don't have a major allergy problem, but enough, and I'm feeling it right now, that like it feels like I have small little pebbles in my eyes when the pollen hits. You know, just this itchy and little rock mm-hmm. feeling in my eyes. So I go out there with a mask and like goggles on because I'm mm-hmm. like, I just don't want it. I don't want it hitting me. And my neighbors look at me like, what's going on here? I'm like, yeah, don't worry about it. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Throw that on with the jorts and the white jorts socks and the new balance and the new balance. I mean, that's that's the look. Maybe some like maybe like some elbow pads or something to go with. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, that's that. Nice, Let's nice. rock and roll. Let's rock and roll with our topic. Because I am actually excited to get back into our topic because this theme that we've had the last couple of weeks has been really fun to dissect. The The whole concept of the, um, you know, uh, boring yet profitable businesses. And one of the things we came to, you know, a conclusion is like why they are that what they are is, is they're indispensable to their customers. You know, and, and again, like to revisit it, you know, the, oftentimes it's said as a negative thing. Like you're not doing anything exciting. You're not doing anything new. But the thing is, is these, these businesses are core, are core part of their customers' lives. You know, we've talked about supply stores and whatnot. Um, they don't have to be flashy, um, but they're indispensable. And, you know, we talked a bit about last week, like, you know, why they're indispensable and ultimately why analytics isn't indispensable to, to businesses. So what I want to do is actually blend two concepts, this concept of indispensable and core to their, their customers, these businesses, and the concept that we've talked about a lot is being sustainable analytics. Um, so when looking at the concept of sustainable analytics, how can it help a digital analytics program be indispensable to a business because that's one of the things to kind of revisit um, last week is is we're finding that digital analytics is not for all the work, all the talk, all the conversations. Anal- digital analytics is not indispensable to the businesses that they're a part of. So how can sustainable analytics help them become uh, indispensable? 
Yeah, I think it's a really, really powerful topic. And I think one of the reasons why analytics um, is seen as dispensable, and, and again, we've talked about this over and over again, but it's worth repeating over and over again, why analytics is often among the first to get budgets cut, among the first to get laid off, is that we're seen as a cost center. And the reason why that is, is because for so long we haven't thought about analytics as a sustainable solution. Um, and so we haven't cared about the costs. You know, it's like, yeah, whatever, let's just produce stuff. It doesn't worry what it costs. And uh, what's ended up happening is our organizations have become very expensive, um, not just from a people perspective, but if you think about it and doing the opposite of sustainability, it's well, we got to capture all this data and have this really complex implementation. More data is better. That comes at a cost. It comes at a cost of maintenance. It comes at a cost of storage and processing. It comes at a cost at, at using that data. Uh, but also it comes at other costs. It comes at the cost of potentially destroying trust in your data, destroying trust in your analytics program. That's very costly and expensive. And so, you know, when we haven't thought sustainably about our analytics practices, um, we've generated a huge amount of cost. And that can be okay as long as that cost is offset with the value that we create. But oftentimes it hasn't been. And we've talked about this on previous episodes that we've been caught since like 2005, 2006 in this seeming never ending cycle of re-implementation. And not, not to say that implementation is a one and done, it surely is not. We, we, we both agree that implementation is a living, breathing thing, that it's constantly being maintained and upkept and added to and changed. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about getting an implementation up and running and then ripping it all the way down to the foundation and rebuilding. Get an implementation up and running, ripping it down. Getting implementation up and running, switching vendors, rebuilding it, ripping it, like nonstop. And so when you're in a constant state of building from scratch or from a basic foundation, it's really, really hard to get the maximum value out of your analytics practice. And then you combine that with the costs of, you know, collecting more data. Now we need more IT te teams, uh, more of the IT's um, time involved in, in implementing and QA and it's, it becomes very costly. Um, and we have a huge target on our back. You know, it's like this team is creating a lot of costs for us. We're not seeing the value. Um, and I think thinking sustainably about an analytics practice is a good place to start to pivot that from being a cost center to at least being aware of what you cost as a team, at least having some awareness around the impact, the footprint you're leaving as a team. So even if you can't, create amazing amounts of value hint you can but even if you couldn't you can at least reduce your cost and your footprint and that that alone will put your team in a better place than they are today yeah and i love how you mentioned the tagging and tracking everything um because th that is definitely at the core of it. And we're going to talk about it on, on this episode, but it, it has been a little while since we've talked about sustainable analytics specifically. You know, we talk about it in pieces here and there, whether it be on the podcast or just in general with clients and others that are interested in talking with us. Can you give us the quick elevator speech on what exactly is sustainable analytics? <clears throat> Excuse me. So I, I'm, I'm guessing lots of people have their own definitions. And by the way, I'm seeing this pick up steam in the marketplace, which I think is a, is a good thing. You know, we've kind of been out uh, on an island talking about this for years and years and years. And it's good to see that more people are starting to talk about it. There's a new agency that popped up in the last couple months that is putting this at, at kind of their foundation. So this is good to see. Um, from, from our perspective, it's about... Um, taking a less is more approach uh, that you know we've been burdened by years and years of over collecting data and not and not using that data um, and and I think we we spell it out on our website that we have more data than we've ever had access to before in 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 history and yet our stakeholders are more frustrated and we're insight poor so we're we're, we're data rich and insight poor. Um, and we believe that taking a less is more approach um, puts everyone in a better position to have 
better data, more insightful data. And that isn't to say we can't have lots of data. It's to say we need to think about it in a very smart and sustainable way. It's the same thing that you would think about, you know, doing anything. If, if we're looking at going into this with no care for the impact and the damage and the cost we create, then we're probably going to end up creating something that creates a lot of pollution and a lot of negative value around us. If we go into it thinking, how can we minimize our footprint? How can we do the most possible with the least amount that we need to collect and not be so damn greedy in, in hoarding and collecting all this data? If there's value in it and if there's use in it, let's collect it. But this idea of just collect it because one day we may need it without putting any thought into the cost and the impact that we're generating um, is incredibly damaging to to companies and it's incredibly damaging to to analytics teams yep so two things um i could hear the thunder in the background mm -hmm. nice so it, it brings a nice ambiance that is is actually real there really is a thunderstorm going <laughs> there, on in the background really is. Yeah, yeah. yeah um but two you, you know I, I like what you said there about data rich and and insight poor and you're also talking about like we've never had this much data and all I can think about is today's entertainment choices. Mm -hmm. With your cable subscription, you've got a couple hundred channels. You've got, if you've got a couple streaming services, you've got catalogs upon catalogs of, of content to, to watch. But how many times do people sit there at night like, God, what am I going to watch? You know, yeah. what, what's there to watch? I'm not sure. It's because there's so many choices. And I think there's there's a great parallel you can draw to data these days. It's like, well, what do I pick? What's, what's actually going to give me the information I want? Like, you know, when you talk about more data than we've had ever before, I think there's a lot of like this paralysis that a same thing comes in when you have too many entertainment choices, you don't know where to start. You don't know what to pick. Yeah, it's I love I'm glad you brought that up. I it's such a great parallel. And not only is it a paralysis thing, but I think it's a lack of value thing. Uh, because I, I see it as as well with with both it, with, you know, entertainment choices with the streaming services we have where it's near like endless amounts of options we could choose from. Um, but it's the same with music. You know, it's it's awesome we have access to all of this content. But it's it's so much that we don't value it, um, and you know, and so a lot of the times we have the TV on, we have the streaming service on, and we're not even paying attention to it. And and I've kind of taken the opposite approach where I've set up a little kind of lounge in in my house where I have a record player and some vinyl, and just that act of slowing down and saying I don't have endless choices. I only have the vinyl that's sitting here. I have to get up and actually put the vinyl on the player, put the needle on it, and, and just sit there and appreciate the music. It is such an incredible feeling of like enjoying that moment and the music. And I think we, we see that a lot with data. We have all of this data all around us that it just becomes almost background noise because it's just we don't appreciate the fact that we have it because there's so much of it. It's a lot like who i can't remember was it a, no it wasn't augustus i don't know but in one of the characters in charlie and the chocolate factory right like maybe it was augustus i don't know you go into the chocolate factory and there's so many choices that they can't savor it if they only had maybe a choice of two or three pieces of candy they would pick one and really savor it and enjoy it but they don't have to because there's near endless amounts of candy flowing yeah um oh god i was about to say something i just sorry i no, 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 no. It it was it, it it'll come back to me. But it is along the the lines of you know all of these these choices and when you bring up value. I mean that that's exactly it. It's there when there's too much of something or things come easy. Um you don't put any value on it. It's when things are scarce. And not to say we should have scarce data, but we should have the data we need, not all of the data we could possibly want. Yeah, and we just have to understand, you know, I, I agree, like we don't want to necessarily put artificial constraints on it, but because it's so free and so much, we really need to prioritize spending time understanding what that does to our thought process and to our strategies, because I don't think we're thinking about it. Um, and, you know, we've talked about this in the terms of, of implementation back when I started at Omniture and you had like 10 variable slots or something. I was just thinking that. Right. 
it wasn't great because we were very limited in our data, but the, the beauty of it is, is it forced you to be very intentional and deliberate in the data you captured. So you really had to think about it and put thought into it. Now, as you remove a lot of those constraints and you have other vendors entering the space saying, there's literally no limit, collect as much as you want, we don't, don't even have to think about it. And it's so we go into it so haphazardly. And again, like, it's great that we're removing those constraints. What's not great is removing those constraints and not taking the time to think about, okay, wait a minute, what what challenges are we gonna face? What traps are we potentially gonna fall into if we're going about this in a haphazard way versus how we had to do it 15, 20 years ago where we had to be really deliberate and precise in what we captured? Yeah, simplicity is hard. It's very yeah. hard. I, I saw that a couple months ago, you know, pe people think like these great products that are out there that where there is a level of simplicity, it's, oh, it's easy. You just remove stuff. No, it's, it's the choice involved of what to include to keep it simple, but yet valuable to the, the user. And I remember what I was going to say. Um, there was a client I worked with 15 years ago and they sent out this daily dashboard and the thing was, it wasn't a dashboard. It was a 15 page report with every a bit of data you could think of. How many people you think looked at that? None. <laughs> Very few, if yeah. any. Yeah. Because, well, one, it was sent so frequently, people would just got into the habit of discarding it. There was fatigue with it. Yeah. But then there was so much with it that like, well, what is actually valuable here? What is this going to tell me? What is important here? Instead of the team working with their individual groups of stakeholders to say, you want to know this, you want to know this, you want to know this. They just said, okay, let's just throw it all together and you go pick through instead of slimming it down saying, okay, you just want to be able to understand how people got to products. And if there's any issues with checkout, let's build a one pager for you. You want to understand key site features like on-site search and um, category navigation. Let's build something for you. You want to know about the whole checkout process. Let's build something for you. Let's no, it was let's just stuff everything together, and none of them looked for what they were, you know, the information that could actually be valuable for them. Yeah, and let's 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 kind of take these insights and talk about okay, well that's great, but how does that enable us to becoming more indispensable, right? Like, how does that translate to us creating value? And the rain is really rolling in, it's nice. Um, I'm gonna draw one more analogy, uh, cause I think it, it works really well. Um, so I have a hot tub out back off the deck. Um, and every nine to 12 months, I do an incredible deep clean on it. It takes me eight to nine hours to do, but it's like once a year. And then every Saturday, I have a 10 to 15 minute, you know, slight little maintenance routine that I go through to keep it in good shape. And then the rest of the time, I get to use it and get the value out of not having to worry about maintaining it or keeping it up. I just get to go sit in it, and it's awesome. I have a neighbor, on the other hand, who every time, like, he sees me working on the hot tub saying, ah, oh, like, I just got to get rid of my hot tub. It's it's, it's not it's not pr valuable. In fact, it's just costing me more money. I'm constantly, wait for it. I heard it. Okay. It's constantly, um, you know, breaking down and I'm, like, having to clean it and all this stuff. It's just a pain in the ass. Like, I don't want to do it anymore. And that is a parallel to what we're doing with, with our analytics teams is, we're not putting in the work to have a sustainable maintenance strategy where we're doing a little bit here and there to keep things running smoothly. Instead, we were, again, kind of gone at it in this haphazard way. It's constantly breaking down. The water's constantly getting dirty, so we're having to scrub it and then drain it completely and then refill it and then drain it completely and do like a deep clean and a backfill. Like we're doing all this stuff. We don't have time to use the data to create. We don't have time to sit in the water and enjoy the, you know, the warm water. We just don't have time because we're constantly maintaining and fixing it instead of just doing these little maintenance routines. And that's where sustainable analytics comes into play is that it gives you a framework to, yeah, every once in a while there's a big effort to make sure that our data is clean and, and, and meaningful. 
But then it's just little tweaks here and there that take very little time at all. And the rest of the time, we can be putting our brain power towards actually activating that data, using it to inform the business, making our stakeholders smarter, answering questions quicker. But we can't do those things if we're constantly putting the majority of our team's brain power into draining the water and refilling the hot tub every week. It's just, it's impossible. Yeah. And yeah, I, I love how you, you bring that up because that's the one thing we overburden our analytics teams with. The reason why they're not able to actually put in those small maintenance cycles, those routine maintenance cycles is going back to what you mentioned toward the beginning of they're constantly being told, collect all the data, tag all the data, make sure we have all the data and everything that comes with it. So they're constantly doing new stuff, which increases the maintenance burden, but they're not doing any maintenance. So then things break down, people lose trust in the data, and then they say, well, this is just an extra team anyway. They're not focusing on what's core to the business. Yeah, and, and it's exactly right. And I think, you know, there's there's a couple things that we need to, to address. Um, we are not saying that more data is bad. We're saying more data in an environment where you don't have a deliberate approach to what you're doing is bad, which is most companies. So I don't want vendors or someone coming to attack me saying, well, we have all this data and we're doing awesome. Well, we're not talking about you. You got it figured out. What we're talking about is most businesses that don't have it figured out, adding more data is, is not the answer. And so number one, we have to say, okay, how can we trim this down to something that we can actually use. And and the word, I think I gave a presentation at a conference once where I said, if you can't afford to maintain it or you don't want to maintain it, don't buy it. So if you can't afford to maintain, if you don't wanna maintain all this data, don't collect it. You're, you're, you're buying it and it's your responsibility to keep that data clean and healthy. Um, so that's a big mind, sh mind shift change that that we need to to go through and we need to go through i think really really quickly um because i think it's not doing us any good to just be collecting all of this data it's it's costing us a lot and ultimately it's going to cost us our jobs i think the second piece is is that um, as those of us working in this space we need to get over this infatuation we have with the shiny object because it's always you know, oh, this new thing we have to add in and we, oh, we got to rebuild it because there's a new way to do a data layer now. And again, I'm not saying that we don't evolve. I'm not saying that we don't innovate in how we think about data, but at some point in time, we have to stop playing with all the toys and actually use this data to create value in the business. Again, otherwise we're not going to have a sandbox to play in. You know, it's a, it's a privilege that we have this sandbox that these companies are allowing us to, to play in. But at some point in time, if we're not using that opportunity to create meaningful value, we've already seen what happens and it's, it's not good. Yeah. And I love how you bring up the shiny object, because I think that gives us a way to point back to our initial comparison of what we've been talking about these you know, quote unquote, boring yet profitable businesses and the idea of the shiny object. It's not to say that they don't stock new products. They don't keep up with the newest things in their field. They don't chase the shiny object. They stay core to their business. They stay core to what they offer to their customers. And it might be like, yeah, we, 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 we don't have a Facebook page. We don't have a Twitter account. Do you really want us tweeting about plumbing supplies? Yeah, uh, <laughs> no, we, we, we don't need that. No, I don't want you t tweeting about plumbing supplies because I want you to be able to be available when I come to say, hey, I'm experiencing this. What are the pieces that I need to fix this? Or I want to put in this new sink. What else should I get with it to make sure it works? Um, that, I, I love that you brought up the shiny object because that's exactly it. That's one of yeah. the reasons why those businesses are core and integral to their customers' lives is they don't chase the shiny object. They don't chase the newest thing. They chase, say, new standards, new products that are helpful, but they know how to ignore the non-valuable shiny object. Yeah, it's it's such an incredibly valuable piece of, of insight. Um, and, you, and you're right. And 
it's not that they don't evolve. It's not that they don't bring in new technologies or ways of doing things. But to your point, they don't just go grab the newest shiny thing out there. They evaluate. They say, is this going to create a better customer experience, a more valuable customer experience? Is it going to be better? If, if not, then no. If it is, and here's the beauty of how a lot of these companies operate, they take it and they never tell you about it. They just incorporate it into the experience and the product and it just makes the experience and product better. But look, let's take AI for an example right now. Every, whether it's you know your, your uh, email platform or your to-do list manager, I don't care what it is, they're all pushing, oh, we've got AI now and it's, in, it's a part of the product and it's this upsell and it's, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, I don't, at some point in time, it's gonna be like, who doesn't? have like the AI companion in their product. And it's those companies that are chasing the shiny object because it's like, oh, we can like sell, you know, something, an upsell to our clients. Let's tack AI onto it. Eh. The product managers and the companies that I respect the most are the ones that are thinking, ooh, this can create a better experience. Let's weave this into our product offering and then all of a sudden we have a better product. And you may not even know why it is. They're like not out there touting, oh, we're AI powered now, you know, or it's an upgrade to AI. It's just like they just made their product better. Yeah. But what's also I, 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 something else I just thought of, what also differentiates some of these companies is they're, they're run by craftspeople. You know, they, like you said, they, they evaluate the newest technology. They evaluate it. But they're like, is this junk? Is this a fad? Versus this is something that could be incredibly valuable to the experience and services we provide to our customers. They just don't jump on the latest thing because it looks cool. Yeah. And I think that's a great place to like summarize and wrap up this episode is we should be craftspeople in our role as, as analysts. And rather than chasing the latest fad or let's be aware of what's happening let's be deliberate in our choices and let's think about what we're creating as an output of that craft that we do and mm. when we do that it puts us in a much better frame of mind to really respect the art of what we're doing if not then we end up with this like frankenstein of of an implementation of a practice where we have all this stuff bolted on it's ugly it's hard to maintain and ultimately the business is like, all right, you kids have had enough fun playing around in the lab. Yeah. And that's exactly how less is more works. Absolutely. It, you know, instead of trying to be everything to everybody. Absolutely. Yeah. So I think you're right. I think that is actually a really good place to, to wrap up for this week. I got nothing else to add. I think that's yeah. it. Less is more, right? Yeah, less, less is more. Is more. Cool. Well, let's go ahead and wrap up there. Great conversation. So we're going to put a bow on this theme next week. Like I said, this, this theme has been more fun than I thought it was going to be. Yeah. I uh, agree. It's a good one. Because I do like it, talking about it. Like I envision the, the plumbing supply store, the, the, the hardware store, not the Home Depot and Lowe's, but like the old school, mm -hmm. you know, Joe's hardware. Yeah. And you walk in and it, it's people there that, know their stuff and it's like should i get this no 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 that, that thing's junk this yeah. is the one i want <laughs> yep mm -hmm. yep i miss those places yeah that they, they, yeah i do too like yeah. they, we, we definitely lost something when we lost them yeah cool all right well let's go ahead and wrap up there and we'll talk to everyone later see you see ya mm -hmm.